Welcome back, fellow cyber enthusiasts, to another episode of Cybersecurity with Kali Linux. Today, we're diving into the world of network reconnaissance using two powerful tools, Wireshark and Nmap. These tools are essential for ethical hackers, cybersecurity experts, and network administrators to gain deep insights into network traffic and system vulnerabilities. But before we proceed, a word of caution, while Wireshark and Nmap are indispensable for cybersecurity professionals, they can be misused for malicious purposes. Always ensure you have proper authorization before using these tools on a network that does not belong to you. Unauthorized use can have serious legal implications. In this video tutorial, we'll be running Wireshark and Nmap in a lab environment. We'll simulate a network with a Windows server acting as a domain controller, alongside a combination of Windows and Linux machines connected to the network. Let's begin our exploration of network reconnaissance and uncover the fascinating capabilities of Wireshark and Nmap. First we will take a look at the OSI model, short for Open Systems Interconnection. This conceptual model was created by the International Organization for Standardization which allows for diverse communication systems to communicate using standard protocols. The seven-layer OSI model is a conceptual framework used to understand and implement standard protocols in network communication. Each layer has its own specific function and purpose, working together to ensure seamless communication between devices. Remembering the proper order of these layers is crucial for understanding how data travels through a network. One easy way to recall the sequence is through a simple mnemonic, all people seem to need data processing. This stands for application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical layers. The application layer provides network services directly to end-user applications. This is the layer where user interface and application services operate. This layer includes protocols used by applications to communicate over the network, such as HTTP, FTP, SSH, and SMTP. The presentation layer ensures that data is in a usable format and is where data encryption, compression, and translation occurs. It translates data between the application layer and the network. At this layer you will find a variety of protocols including SSL, TLS, SSH, and IMAP. The session layer manages and controls the connections between computers. It establishes, maintains, and terminates sessions between applications. Common protocols and services found at this layer are PPTP, RPC, NetBIOS, APIs, and sockets. The transport layer provides reliable data transfer services to the upper layers. It ensures complete data transfer, error recovery, flow control, and data segmentation. Common protocols at this layer include TCP, UDP, SCTP, and SPX. The network layer determines the best path to transfer data packets. It handles IP addresses and routing and manages routing of data from source to destination across multiple nodes and networks. This layer includes IP, ICMP, RIP, OSPF, and BGP protocols. The data link layer is responsible for node-to-node -node data transfer, establishing a link between two directly connected nodes. It manages MAC addresses and handles error detection and correction, ensuring reliable data transfer between adjacent network nodes. This layer also corrects errors that may occur in the physical layer. Common protocols and services at this layer include Ethernet, PPP, Switch, Bridge, ATM, and Frame Relay. The physical layer transmits raw bit streams over a physical medium. It deals with the physical connection between devices, including cables, switches, and other hardware. It is concerned with the transmission and reception of unstructured raw data between a device and a physical transmission medium, rather than protocols or services. Now that we've covered the seven-layer OSI model, let's shift our focus to network protocols. These protocols are the rules and conventions for communication between network devices, ensuring that data is transmitted accurately and efficiently. Understanding these protocols is essential for anyone diving into network analysis and cybersecurity. In this tutorial, we'll be using a few common protocols that you should be familiar with. 
Let's go over them briefly before we dive into our demonstrations with Nmap and Wireshark. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, is the protocol used for transmitting web pages over the internet. When you access a website, your browser uses HTTP to request and receive the page's content. HTTP operates at the application layer of the OSI model. Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, is a connection-oriented protocol that ensures reliable data transmission between devices. It establishes a connection before data is sent and guarantees that data arrives in the correct order. TCP operates at the transport layer of the OSI model. UDP, short for User Datagram Protocol, is a connectionless protocol that allows for fast transmission of data without establishing a connection. It does not guarantee the order or integrity of the data, making it suitable for applications like video streaming where speed is more important than reliability. UDP operates at the transport layer of the OSI model. Internet Control Message Protocol, or ICMP, is used for diagnostic and error reporting purposes in network communications. The ping command uses ICMP to check the reachability of a host on a network by sending echo request messages and waiting for echo reply messages. ICMP operates at the network layer of the OSI model. Secure Shell, or SSH, is a protocol used to securely log into a remote computer and execute commands. It provides encrypted communication, ensuring that data transmitted over the network is secure. SSH operates at the application layer of the OSI model. Nmap, short for Network Mapper, is a free, open-source tool used for network discovery and security auditing. Network administrators use Nmap for tasks like network inventory and monitoring host or service uptime. It employs raw IP packets to identify available hosts, their operating systems, and running services. Nmap is compatible with Linux, Windows, and Mac OS X. The Nmap suite includes several tools, ZenMap, a graphical user interface and results viewer, NCAT, a data transfer, redirection, and debugging tool, NDIF, for comparing scan results, and NPing, for packet generation and response analysis. While Nmap is pre-installed on most versions of Kali Linux and Parrot OS, we'll install Nmap on our Windows PC. Navigate to nmap.org and click the Download tab. Select the latest stable release self-installer for Windows, compatible with Windows 7 and newer, as well as Windows Server 2008 R2 and newer. Agree to the terms and follow the prompts to install nmap. When prompted, accept the NPCAP license agreement and select the checkbox to support RAW 802.11 traffic and monitor mode for wireless adapters. Ensure you have a wireless network interface card that supports monitor mode. Follow the remaining prompts to complete the installation of Nmap and its dependencies, including the ZenMap GUI. There are many options available when scanning a domain, a specific IP address, or a range of IP addresses. Here are a few examples of what you can do with Nmap. For more information, be sure to check out the man pages or the official Nmap reference guide. We will return to Nmap shortly after a brief introduction to Wireshark. Wireshark is a free, open source, cross platform network protocol analyzer. It can be used for live capture and offline analysis of data packets. Network administrators and cybersecurity experts commonly use Wireshark to capture and analyze raw network traffic. Like Nmap, Wireshark comes pre-installed on Kali Linux and Parrot OS but can easily be installed on Windows and Mac OS devices by downloading the current stable release from Wireshark.org. Once you have downloaded the latest stable release of Wireshark, launch the installer and follow the prompts. The installer includes both Wireshark and T-Shark, the command line version of the Wireshark utility. T-Shark offers all the functionalities of Wireshark but in a text-based interface, making it ideal for use in scripts and automated workflows. Now that we have installed both Nmap and Wireshark, we can explore how to use these tools together for enhanced network reconnaissance. Remember, it's crucial to follow ethical and legal guidelines when using these powerful tools. Always ensure you have explicit permission to scan any network. 
we need to install one final tool before bringing it all together. PuTTY is a free and open source terminal emulator, serial console, and network file transfer application. This versatile tool supports several network protocols, including SCP, SSH, Telnet, our login, and raw socket connection. Originally designed for Microsoft Windows, PuTTY is also available for Mac OS. In the final section of this tutorial, we will use PuTTY to connect to our target device using SSH. Note that this tool is not necessary when using Kali Linux or other Linux distributions, as they come pre-installed with Bash or Shell terminals, which can perform the same functions. Download PuTTY by navigating to PuTTY.org and clicking on the Download PuTTY link at the top of the homepage. This will redirect you to the download page, where you can choose either the 64-bit or 32-bit installer. Download the appropriate version for your system and follow the prompts to install PuTTY. Now that we have a basic understanding of these protocols, let's see them in action. We'll begin with demonstrations using Nmap and Wireshark to capture and analyze network traffic. First, we'll use the ping command to check the status of devices on our network. Next, we we'll use nmap to scan the subdomain scanme.nmap.org for open ports, with permission. Finally, we we'll use PuTTY to attempt establishing an SSH connection on port 22, which nmap revealed as open. Throughout these demonstrations, we'll capture the traffic using Wireshark to observe how these protocols function. Let's begin by launching Wireshark. Before we start capturing packets, we'll customize the data display. Click on Edit and then Preferences. Under the Appearance section, click on Columns. Here, we can choose which fields are displayed. We will uncheck Source Mac and Destination Mac to protect our privacy. However, in real-world scenarios, this step is not necessary. Depending on your needs, you may also choose to check or uncheck source GOIP city, destination GOIP city, and two-letter country code. Once you've selected the fields you want to display, click OK. Then, select the network interface you wish to capture data from and click on the blue shark fin icon to start capturing data. With Wireshark capturing traffic, open a web browser and navigate to scanme.nmap.org. When you return to Wireshark, it might be challenging to identify the traffic between your host computer and the Nmap web server. No worries. Launch command prompt on Windows or a shell terminal on Linux and type ping scammy.nmap.org. Assuming you are connected to the internet, this command should return the public IP address of the scammy.nmap.org web server. Copy this address and return to Wireshark. In the filter toolbar, enter ip.addr space equals sign equals sign space followed by the IP address you obtained in the previous step. Press enter to filter traffic and only see packets going to and coming from scanme.nmap.org. With the display filter in place, launch ZenMap. In the target field, enter scanme.nmap.org or the IP address obtained from the ping command and click scan. This will reveal all the open ports on the scanme.nmap.org web server. Notice that ports 22 and 80, among others, are open. Port 22 is commonly used to establish a secure shell connection with a remote device, while port 80 is typically used by the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. Return to Wireshark and scroll down. You will notice a series of ICMP, TCP, and HTTP packets between our host device and the target device. Even though we have filtered traffic between our host and target device, there is still a lot of traffic to sift through, which can be somewhat overwhelming. To narrow down the traffic further, we can add an additional filter. Type and at the end of the first filter, followed by our second filter. In this case, we will filter by the target IP and TCP port 80. This will show only TCP and HTTP traffic. We can create more complex filters to view multiple types of traffic, such as HTTP, HTTPS, and TCP between our host and target devices by combining AND, AND or operators. This allows us to filter traffic more precisely. For example, you can wrap certain parts of your filters in parentheses to group conditions together. 
This helps in constructing more advanced filters that focus on specific types of traffic. Here's an example of a complex filter you can use. This filter will show HTTP and HTTPS traffic between our host and the target device. You can see how combining these conditions provides a more focused view of the network traffic. As previously noted, our ZenMap scan revealed that port 22 is open on our target device. This port is used by the Secure Shell, or SSH, protocol to operate securely over an unsecure network. In our final example, we will use PuTTY to attempt establishing an SSH connection between our host and target device, then return to Wireshark to capture the traffic generated by PuTTY. Note that we do not have the login credentials to successfully connect to the target device, but we'll walk through the steps anyway. In Wireshark, we will filter our traffic to only see TCP packets going across port 22. Launch PuTTY, and in the host name or IP address field, enter the host name or IP address of our target device and click Open. Since we do not have a username or password for this device, we will enter some random username and password to capture the key exchange between our host and the target device. We'll save our deep dive into the captured packets for a future episode of Space Science Tech. Today, we've traversed an incredible journey through the digital landscape, we demystified the OSI model, explored common network protocols, and showcased powerful tools like Ping, Nmap, Wireshark, and PuTTY. If you enjoyed this ride through the cyber cosmos, hit that like button, share with your fellow tech enthusiasts, and smash that subscribe button. Join us next time on Space Science Tech for more electrifying content. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep exploring the final frontier of space, science, and technology.